Hey, hello everybody. So let's do a little, another comic haul. Most of it's from Gmart and stuff, but you know, I've had other like, uh, you know, watching video situations where it's, I needed to buy the comic. Uh, the first one I'll show is, I guess this, uh, the Sandland comic. I'll show the two and, uh, video or the two comics that I bought, uh, from influence, recent influence, just from watching videos is, uh, Sandland. Now this is a, uh, this is an uh, Kira Toriyama book, more known, of course, for Dragon Ball. I saw this recently on Kayfabe, which many of you guys may have. Uh, so, something about it made me more interested than in Dragon Ball. I tend to do this, too, uh, by the way. So, you know, I know Dragon Ball's there. It's really big. I know people have really liked it. In fact, recent people in the community have, like, read it very quickly and uh, are big fans. And But, you know, this is what happens to me. Uh, this is the one that inter interested me, and I've heard uh, really good things about it. Other one, I just finished reading this. I posted it on Twitter, or X, or whatever, uh, for my, my 500 comic goal, is uh, Fun to Funky. Oh, this was uh, Kayfabe did this one. And this was on Living the Line. Uh, I read this. It was pretty, it was pretty good. Pretty good little, like, zine-type comic. Basically just open musings about collecting comic books and the sort of addiction and the need, the feel and the need and the enjoyment of the hobby kind of thing uh, set around at least at the beginning, not not the last couple issues, but set around like a guy like flying a spaceship and something, but it's mostly like musings and whatnot. <clears throat> Can't remember exactly why I bought this. I think I must have saw it cheap and it was a, a random book that uh, I, might, I might have packed it with stuff and now I don't know where it is and so this is the only thing in the hall. I think it was like a, a random ghost, old Ghost Rider book. I didn't have his little appearance in uh, in Punisher. I think there's actually two issues of this flipping around. I don't know. I grabbed it. I go, oh, that's new. I'm going to grab it. Um, this is the Ultimate Nat Rat. So this was just a Fantagraphics book I didn't have. And it was uh, on auction and no one made a bid on it. And I did. And it was... Uh, cheap enough, I think, like free shipping and stuff. This is for those that don't know, like a little bit of a parody on uh, on Batman. I don't know when I'll get to it. This is really one of those things. Oh, five bucks. The auction was ending, so let's uh, let's jump in there. So, uh, and I've seen that around. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's that remembered. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I showed this Reptile House book. I'll be reading this and probably doing a video shortly here. It's a new reptile house. And then for whatever reason, um, I decided I like these these midnight covers uh, for Night Terrors. And uh, and so I bought a bunch of them on, uh, on FOC. So that just means I was like, oh, what's on FOC? Let's get a bunch of them. You know, they're very simple. They're almost negative negatives in, in a way. <laughs> um, Night Terrors, I didn't, you know, I know some people are, have been into it. Um, you know, it, it was good enough. I think I might uh, read the main title. I didn't even feel like reading Green Lantern. In fact, the break made me almost decide to drop Green that Green Lantern book because I was gonna thinking about dropping it anyway, but I was give it more of a chance. But now it's been the two months, so um, I might I might go ahead and read the other Green Lantern, the uh, John Stewart one. This is not a Night Terrors book, but it's the same idea. So the this is a Blade cover. Uh, I got the vigil. So now what do I have all? Is it number? I think there's only four issues of this, maybe five. So I read those all at once. Been uh, been collecting those. You know, whenever there's a whenever there's a facsimile, I'm there lately. I think this is yeah. Whenever there's a facsimile, I'm there. So this is the Wonder Woman, uh, War of the Gods special edition, George Perez book. So I, I can be hit or miss on George Perez. I really do think is I know a lot of people are going to say Wonder Woman. Um, but man, I really do think his best work is in Infinity War. Like this is not, this isn't the stuff that really grabs me with his, even though the George Perez uh, Wonder Woman run is the best one. Um, I got a few. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I got so many. I mean, this is another sketch cover. So I'll get someone to sketch something cool. Some kind of Klingon or something. A red sketch cover is pretty awesome. Got to put my sketch covers together, I think. And then, um, I'm not sure why I did this, so let's call this a mistake. But uh, I got two covers for Day of Blood. I'm actually really into this, uh, real excited about it. I think I, what I might have done is order one of the covers thinking that it didn't get ordered. 
because it's not a Star Trek book, it's a like a the event book. I think I may have ordered one on FOC because I thought I didn't have it ordered, so that's what it looks like. But then I ordered this too, so maybe not. Um, Gunslinger Spawn. This is another FOC problem because normally I just get the A cover. They could, you know, they're still they're still the nice price. They're still that nice two ninety nine price. And I wonder if this was just a artist I normally like, and so I just went ahead and got it less than two ninety nine. By the way, when you're doing it on the uh, the thirty thirty five percent off, um, then somewhere along the line I decided to get that A cover as the Virgin. So. For whatever reason, I have three issues of Gunslinger Spawn, number 22. There's King Spawn. I was smart with that. I only bought the one. <laughs> uh, and then uh, not that many Star Wars books came in this shipment. There's Dr. Aphra. So, very excited to read this because it, it ended, you know, with that scary. That's sort of a spoiler for Aphra 33. It, it ended like in a real cool sort of way. They're in another Jedi temple, but it turns out it was a prison. So when they broke this little bell thing uh, that they thought they needed, it opened up the prison. And there's, I don't know whether what that is, if that's a, a Sith ghost or a, or a Jedi ghost or what. So that should be interesting. And that's Dr. Aphra and um, little Luke Skywalker team up before the Dark Droid stuff starts. I've already read Dark Droid's one before that starts. And these little one shots. I've, now, I've been around Star Wars com comics long enough. They just know that were marks. Um, I don't think I've ever read, and there's been different ways they've done these one shots. Like they did Age of Rebellion and it was, um, you know, it was one of the characters like uh, Han, like maybe Han Solo or something. Sometimes they were more minor characters and stuff. And it was like one shot comic about them. But you know, all it did is like, you know, touch on their personality from the film more like. More or less, they weren't like, I don't think I've ever read any of these little one-shot pushes that were good. And I haven't gotten into these yet, because there's like a, oh yeah, like it's like a Max Rebo one. and So I sort of like that there's some of them that they're, you know, I like the idea of what they're doing uh, for Return of the Jedi, a bunch of these, but <clears throat> I've just never seen any great ones. Oh, I read the Ewoks one, that was okay. Like, they're just okay, you know, the um, Jabba's Palace one, it was okay. But, uh, you know, they get you, they get you on it. You know what was underrated is this. This was like an ad. This Galaxy's Edge was basically an ad for the uh, overpriced, so that's already shut down too, the overpriced Star Wars cruise or whatever. But the book ended up being actually really good. Uh, Extreme Venom Verse, still reading that. Uh, or still buying it. I got this variant edition for whatever reason, so there you go. I think that's, I forget what that this shark's name is. For some reason, it was like a minor hit on... The Infinity Comics, but no one read those goddamn Infinity Comics, so. <clears throat> then I got two Xeno Comics. I don't know why I got... Oh, I do know why. That's Matt Lipsniewski. Uh, Lipsniewski. So just two of my favorite artists. And, like, this is this one basically is a, a print. I don't so much mind buying um, the double uh, covers when it's something like Oni or something like that. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, for the superhero stuff, that stuff gets churned out. You always find a cover that you want. Like, or how many, how many like... Spider-Man, Peach Momoko covers do you really need? Um, yeah, this is uh, Leshnevsky. That's how my wife would pronounce it. But I, we probably pronounce it like Leshnevsky or something like that. But that's this is a, a Zeno. And then, of course, you know, you know I type in, you know very well I type in uh, James Stoko's name into the pre-order thing. Yeah. What covers is James Stoko doing today? And he's doing this badass cover. I mean, turn your phone sideways, guys, so you can see this badass cover. Just turn it sideways. There you go. There you go. Love that guy. Love that guy. Um, <clears throat> what else we got here? Uh, Grog the Frog, the Book of Taurus. So I'll grab uh, I'll grab stuff pretty easily from Silver Sprocket. So uh, this looked uh, cute. Cute enough. Let's say cute. I was gonna say good enough. Let's say cute enough. It's Grog the Frog, and the Book of Taurus from Silver Sprocket. I mean, it's um, its retail price was, is eleven ninety nine. So, um, you know, take about three dollars and fifty cents roughly off of that, and it seemed like a uh, a decent enough thing to support a place like Silver Sprocket. Although I do do wish they, I wish them and Floating World. I wish I would get a lot more. 
adult stuff. I wish the quality was them. Um, uh, but the, the, uh, genre of this stuff was like what, um, Strangers Fanzine does, but I, you know, I tore them apart recently. Uh, I didn't really tear them apart. They're way better than me, but, um, and, uh, Diane Newman, uh, you know, this is one of those things where, okay, I got it, um, because it was Fantagraphics doing a, uh, a tribute and an individual sort of stapled issue, like floppy issue. So I wanted to go ahead and get that. I don't know much about Diane Newman. Um, but I know enough that I was like, ah, you know, mix it, mix both those things and I'll probably, uh, I'll probably be okay with it, you know, and it's a $7 book. Um, at some point this is, you know, I'll probably like enjoy, you know, be glad I bought this. So let's see. Well, it looks pretty good art. I thought it was a whole bunch of different artists in here, but. Oh, it's Bill Griffith. Oh, Bill Griffith did the whole thing. So, and that was the other reason too. So it's about his wife, I believe. So, I mean, this might, this might make me cry. So, well, we'll see. I'm not sure. I read about it and I go, ah, that's good enough to get it. Um, this one's big for me. This is Offshore Lightning. And, you know, I've been mentioning, you know, the f four women or whatever, um, I probably should have put Saito uh, Nazuna on that list too, uh, as far as like underground alt manga writers that were getting a lot of the women uh, being translated. And it's interesting. So they're coming out. They're coming out in a time where I think like um, the Tsuge um, and all the other guys that have been that they've been doing um, as far as from Garo and stuff like that. I have started to, you know, the books are out there, they've been talked about enough, and, you know, starting to pick up steam, and then uh, all the women are getting uh, their thing, um, their stuff putting out. So, this is awesome. This is not a Holmberg book, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's just cool. And then Juliet also looked good to me. Uh, this is, as far as I can tell, I thought it was, I guess it's drawn in quarterly, so it could be Quebecois. Um, so, this one looked cool to me, too. Uh, I don't know when I would get to it. So just uh, real beautiful, like, you know, there's the normal cartooning that you would expect, very like Euro. And then some of the pages just have, I thought, uh, nice, really nice watercolors. Oh, even that, I would say even that, those houses and stuff. There's just some like garden stuff and, that I think is real beautiful. So when I normally I'll like see, oh, you know, drawn in quarterly, fanographs, whatever, they have this big graphic novel and they're, you know, they get pretty expensive. Um, and you just always hope that you can find some art from the artist or, or art from the book out there just to see like, is it the thing that you want? And you can't always hit it. Cause I remember I go, ah, I don't want ducks uh, from drawn in quarterly also, you know, and that's one of the bigger indie books of last year. So, um, you know, I'll check that out from the library, I guess. And then uh, there's that other Punisher. I see. Remember, I said I ah, had two Punishers where Ghost Rider uh, guest guest starred, and it was just at the bottom of the stack, guys. So anyway, that is the comic haul for today. Thank you, guys. Oh yeah, my Yoda shirt. That's good to Yoda shirt. Later, guys.